Hey Scorecasters, EP here with another video for Scorecast Online. Today I'm going to be talking about CineSample's CineWinds Pro expansion library. I'm going to be doing a general walkthrough discussing the actual interface design as well as its navigation, but I'll also be going through the different patch options included. Let's get started. CineWinds Pro is the expansion product for CineSample's CineWinds Core Library. It's compatible with the full version of Contact 4 and higher, not the free player, and it comes with over 17 gigs of samples. With the Pro Edition, they're adding the remainder of the orchestral woodwind section not included with Core, along with a variety of ethnic and Renaissance-styled wind instruments. With regard to the recording of this library, CineSamples has once again returned to the Sony Pictures scoring stage, and they've brought back legendary mixing engineer Dennis Sands, who was initially brought in on their Cinebrass library series. The library's been split into three main categories, the doublers, the ethnics, and the phrases section. But before we get into the instrument patches, let's first take a close look at the interface. The CineWinds Pro interface is split into three separate areas, mapping, mixer, and settings. Let's open up the mapping area. Here, you'll see we have a variety of preset options to trigger the samples. What's so useful about this is that composers are given the freedom to pick and choose which setting best suits their own writing style. The presets included are velocity, velocity inverse, key switch, key switch velocity, MIDI CC, and best of all, a custom map section, which allows you to choose exactly how each articulation is triggered. Let's move on to the mixer area. In this section, we're given a typical set of mixing options, full, close, surround, etc. But also, CineSamples has included a bonus mic set titled Spot. This provides an ultra close and intimate sound option for your mix. RAM is manually controlled for each setup via the on off buttons. And reverb can be applied separately via the send knob. On the right, you'll see the EQ area where you'll have the option of seven different impulse responses, just by clicking on the preset button below. On the left, there are quite a few custom mixing option presets that provide different mic configurations and allow composers to work quickly in a variety of cinematic settings. Finally, we have the settings area. On the left, we have a Logata control section. Here, you can choose between monophonic and polyphonic modes. In the middle, we have the Legato Speed knob. Optimal setting has been set to 12 o'clock, as seen here in its default position. But if you are playing slower, more lyrical lines, turning down the speed will let you hear more of the Legato transitions. For faster, more agile phrasing, turning up the speed of the Legato control will allow for more realism. Over here, you have the option of turning the Legato control on and off. This will give you just basic sustain and short samples, so when playing chords or combinations of notes, the legato scripting won't interfere with performance. Below, there is a dynamics fader that allows composers to compress the dynamic range of the loaded instrument. Effectively, this slider controls how the instrument's dynamic range is affected when dealing with extreme changes in the mod wheel's position. On the right, we have a typical multi-effects section for composers to use. These built-in effects can be quite heavy on your CPU, and CineSamples recommend running the library at a buffer of 256 or higher. Now, at the bottom, we have a round robin section. The random button does exactly what it says, making the round robin samples randomly cycle, preventing the dreaded machine gun effect. The cycle button will just have the round robin samples cycle in the same order every time. The round robin reset area will reset the order of cycling after you stop hitting the MIDI keys. The knob itself controls the reset time. All the way left equals one second. All the way right equals 10 seconds reset time. Next, we have the sample start area. Turning it on will let you use the knob to advance the sample start position. This makes the attack of the note less realistic, but in turn can also increase the responsiveness from the loaded instrument. The release delay knob controls how long after a key is released will the release sample play. The release trigger switch allows you to completely turn off releases. Okay, there was a lot of technical information to get through there. Now it's time for some fun. Let's take a look at the patches. Here's a list of the instruments included with the doubler section. 
you'll see that each instrument includes an articulation and a true legato patch. The articulation patches all contain eighth, quarter, and half note shorts, but also include options for half and whole step trills. A very cool extra feature with the articulation patches is the double, triple tonguing option. This allows composers to easily play quick, short repetitions. Let's have a quick listen to one of the patches in action, showcasing some of these features. Now let's take a look at the instruments included with the ethnic section. As you can see, there's quite a variety of recorders, flutes, and pipes to choose from. For this section, CineSamples brought in well-known instrumentalist William Lyons. He's worked on such scores as Pride and Prejudice, The Golden Age, and The Hobbit. It's rare to have access to so many period folk instruments in just one library, and the fact that the samples were performed by Mr. Lyons is definitely an added bonus. Before we go over the patches in detail, Let's listen to a few of them in action first. Here's a short example of a cue I recently scored in the medieval renaissance style. Like the doubler section, the recorder, flute, and pipe patches have the mixer, mapping, and settings tab, as well as a key switch, velocity, and custom map option. With the recorder and flute patches, you also have long and short samples made up of the eighth, quarter, and half notes. The pipe patches come with an additional drone section highlighted here in green. Here you can control the bass pitch and also play simultaneously with the main melody range highlighted in blue. There are a couple of extra features included within the ethnic section, so let's quickly go through those. The Irish flute, penny whistle, border pipes, and a duck include an alternative attack which can be triggered by low velocities. The Irish flute, penny whistle, baroque flute, and a duck include an embellishment option that starts and ends on the root note. This is called a short turn. This style of ornamentation is utilized constantly in traditional folk music. The Irish flute, penny whistle, renaissance, and illin pipes come with an alternate set of legatos, which are triggered via a key switch. This gives composers another option for the legato transitions between notes. The deduct comes with a slide down feature that is a natural embellishment to the instrument. It can be assigned to either a key switch or a velocity. The soprano and tenor recorder include half step and whole step trills, which by default are set to key switches. Finally, all instruments included within the ethnic section, except for the soprano sham and the duck, include vibrato control that is set to CC2. Additionally, the Irish flute and penny whistle allow you to choose between finger and breath vibrato. Now, many of the instruments included in the ethnic section when used in a cinematic setting deal more with lyrical and slow style writing. As an Irish composer, one of the areas I specialize in is Celtic and folk world music. I felt a true test of some of the patches would be in actual genre style writing. So let's see how the Illin pipes and penny whistle hold up in my traditional reel set to 4-4. I brought in a good friend and fellow musician, Greg French, to help me with some of the extra instruments for this particular session. Let's get cracking.
The final section included with the Cinewins Pro expansion is the phrases. Here we have multiple performance phrases recorded for the following instruments. The Irish flute, Renaissance flute, soprano sham, the duck, as well as the border, Renaissance and Illin pipes. Many of the phrases are long and will play for the duration that you hold down the phrases key outlined here in blue. To change the key, look to the green section here. It is important to note that phrases are not mapped to any particular tempo. With so many new library developers coming into the market these days, composers can sometimes feel a bit overwhelmed with choice. Cinesamples have operated for many years, and there's a reason why they're considered one of the most respected developers around. They care about quality, and that's what stands out about this Pro Expansion. It's obvious from working with this library that Cinesamples has taken the time to think about not just what composers need, but where, how, and who they use in capturing the best recording possible. Cinewins Pro retails at $399. For more information and tutorials on this product, as well as the rest of their collection, why don't you visit their website at cinesamples.com. For more information on scoring news, reviews, as well as educational tools, visit our website, scorecastonline.com. I'm EP, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.